Fox is here. <laughs> I had to bribe him. Jazza sent me the Jazzy Art Box. It's a limited edition. Jazza, thank you so much for sending this art box to me. I'm really excited to open it up. I already watched the video on your channel, so I basically know what's in here. I may have forgotten a few things. Jazz is really awesome. If you don't know who he is, I don't know how you wouldn't know that, but I will link his channel below, Draw With Jazza. He does a lot of fun art videos and he's super talented. I've been watching him for a couple years. I actually had met him at VidCon last year. Also, I am very thankful that Jazza reached out to me because my channel is so craftastic and even though I consider myself an artist, I feel like in the YouTube community, I kind of am an oddball and no one quite knows where to put me into a community, if that makes sense. Sometimes I do drawings, sometimes I do paintings, but a lot of times I open craft kits. So for any of you who may be new here and don't know what you're gonna get on this channel, you're gonna get a lot of things but uh, I do fine art sometimes. Enough labbing, let's open the box. So this is a collaboration he did with Smart Art. I've never actually tried any art subscription boxes aside from the Crayola one. I do want to get some and kind of compare them for a future video. Whoa, it's Jazz's face. Oh, jeez. Put my face on your face. That's awesome. There's some bright orange paper. Oh my gosh. A letter! Sarah Lynn, so craftastic. It says, Dear Sarah, I've always enjoyed how colorful and well produced your videos are. Thanks for the inspiration over the years. I hope you enjoy this box of things I love and wish you all the best for the future. Can't wait to see you at VidCon again. Yes, I'm excited. First, there's an overview of everything that's in the box. It just kind of gives a rundown of what's inside. There is a very colorful bookmark with the Jazza cartoon logo on it. And there is a print of one of Jazz's drawings. This cat in it looks a lot like Leo. <laughs> he heard me talking about a cat. So this, this cat looks a lot like Leo. That's awesome. Buddy, you're so loud. Yes, the cat looks like you. And by the way, I will be making an art piece with this stuff. So aside from just unboxing, reviewing, I will also be creating because, you know, oh, someone's calling me. It's actually my mother. Hello, mom, I'm filming a video. Oh, Are... no, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. You're actually in the video, so I got, I'll talk to you when you get here. Oh, oh you can hear me in the video? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> hey. All right, bye. First, we have this Prismacolor Cool Erase. Cool Erase? Cool Erase? Color Erase. Color Erase. Color Erase. It has to be. Color Erase. I don't know. <sighs> So Prismacolor Erasable Colored Pencil in blue. Jazzy uses this pencil for his construction sketches. Then we have a really heavy duty, professional, I mean, to me, it's really professional feeling mechanical pencil. Most of my mechanical pencils come from Dollar Tree or maybe like a giant pack at Target of the Bic ones, which they're not bad, but like this, I feel official. So this is the Zebra M301 Mechanical Pencil 0.5 millimeters black. Super light and sleek, as it says here, and really pro to use. Like, yeah, I feel like it's very professional looking, like I said. Tombow, I'm very familiar with Tombow products. I love their dual tip brush markers. This is a Fudenosuke brush pen. He says it's his ink pen wild card, quote unquote, and it's really useful for fine tuning things. And then, here we go, a Tombow dual brush pen in black. This has a brush tip on one end, and a fine tip marker on the other. It's good for outlining and coloring, and in case you're wondering, it is water-based. I actually have a couple of these. This is one of my favorite white gel pens. It's the Signo Uniball. This thing's wonderful for adding highlights to many different types of artwork, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, marker drawings, colored pencil. You can use it for pretty much anything. Here we have a Faber-Castell dust-free eraser. I'm interested to try this. Next is another fine liner. This is by Marabu. I've actually never heard of the brand, the graphics fine liner. So there's four of them in here, 0.2, 0.4, 0 0.8, and then a brush. I definitely like the feel of these a lot. They're light, fast, low odor, and they have water-based pigment. We have a pack of markers. These are the 
Spectrum Noir. I actually have used this brand of markers before and to be completely honest, I did run into issues with the brush tips kind of falling apart. They kind of lost their precision. Jazza mentions this in his unboxing video. He said that he actually worked with the company, reached out to them, told the same concerns that I basically just said and that they worked with him to make the tips even better. So I am so excited to try these. The ones I have, they were really great pigment wise, but yeah, I just hope that the tips are better. Ooh, okay, so there's this travel pencil case and it's a really nice size. Let's open this, ooh, that's nice. The zipper has a snap, so it stays attached to the pouch when you're not using it, so it doesn't wiggle around, that's kinda nice. It has elastic so you can hold up to 12 pencils, I think, or wait, 24 pencils in here. Wow, cool. None of the pencil pouches I have are this flat and they don't have any, you know, individual storage spaces. I just have the regular pencil pouch where you unzip the top and throw everything in, so this will be nice. And speaking of pencils, these are Polychromos and I've never ever used them. I hear so many good things about them, great things. I just never got around to purchasing them. I always have used either Crayola for like most of my life and then I switched over to, um, I can't think of words. I switched over to Prismacolors. I like them a lot, but they definitely do have some fallout and they don't necessarily always blend the best unless you use a colorless blender. So I am so excited to try these out. There are 12 different colored pencils in here and I hear that the lead does not break when you sharpen as much as it does with Prismacolors, so that'll be a wonderful change. Maybe I'll switch to using these and get like the most giant pack they have. Ooh, here is a sample of some blending card. I actually have the full pack of this, like the, the full size, like normal, wow. The big non-test version. This is paper to use with alcohol markers specifically so the ink blends better. There's also a special code if you wanna try this for 20% off. The final thing in the box is a sketchbook. I don't know how to say this. It's German. Henna Mule? I have no idea. It is the Nostalgy 8x6 sketchbook. It actually smells really good. I think we should get to making smart. Hey buddy, what do you think of the box? Is it really cool? Meow yeah, once for yes. It is the next day, hence the different outfit I didn't finish filming yesterday, so let's keep going. I wanna quickly compare the tips between the, oh! Um, I just picked this up with my foot, yes. Between my toes, hidden talent, not really. I wanna compare the old Spectrum Noir tips to the new ones because like I mentioned, these ones kind of get eaten up. First impressions, very smooth. I like it. These are alcohol markers, so the ink is throwing through the page a little bit. It's a very, very slight bleed. It's more of like a heavy ghost, you can see that. But if you go over the same spot multiple times, it's going to definitely bleed a lot. And so let's try it on this blending card. Oh my gosh, it goes on like butter. This paper is a lot smoother than the sketchbook paper, but this sketchbook paper is so nice and thick. It's like cardstock. Even on here, it's gonna ghost a little bit, but that's fine. This pencil pouch is pretty awesome, but when you put all this bulky stuff, you're not gonna be able to put as many in, but it's still great for carrying around kind of those essentials that you want to mix and match. And it zips up really nicely. The thing I'm most excited for is to try the polychromos. <sighs> they smell so pencil-y. <laughs> so they're light fast, very soft, vibrant color lay down, and fully water soluble, so you can kind of do like watercolor paintings with them. <gasps> I can't get this out of here. These are so nice. I mean, I think so. They just look nice, they feel nice. <laughs> Why am I trying white though? Because I'm not gonna be able to see it. They go on really nicely on the paper too. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Let me try a darker color though. Light ultramarine. Wow, where have you been all my life? Seriously, I love these. I really, really love these. I may be doing a video in the future comparing these to Prismacolors because I think I may be in love. I feel like this is a breakup, no. I can be in a polygamous relationship with two kinds of colored pencils, right? 
I couldn't decide what to do for the artwork, so I asked my followers over on Instagram and chose a hummingbird based on your suggestions. Thank you to all of you who sent those in. I decided that the hummingbird would be great because it can be a little bit abstract and I can change the colors around and really use as many of these supplies as I possibly can. If I had to choose, I'd probably say that colored pencils are my favorite medium to create art with, but it is a really tough choice because I like working with markers as well. For this piece, as you can see, I'm mostly using colored pencils, but I am making some parts of it very bold with the black fine liners, and I'm also incorporating the Spectrum Noir markers for very bold spots on the tail because these colored pencils can only get so dark. No matter how hard you press, the markers will be able to get a little bit darker of a pigment, so I really like that for a shadow, and it really does make that part of the tail pop and really heightens the contrast. You can see for the wings that I tried to create shadows and highlights with the colored pencil by varying the tone of each color. And I did put some white in with the gel pen to make them look more like feathers. Super quick announcement for those of you who live in the Northwest Ohio area, maybe Southern Michigan or Eastern Indiana, I am going to be doing some sort of like meetup event. So mark your calendars for August 3rd if you potentially wanna come meet me and come to a really fun event in Toledo. So I finished off the body by blending the colors as best as I could. I definitely didn't use all the colored pencil colors and it was really challenging only having these colors instead of a pack of maybe 48 or more because I'm not used to making my own colors, to mixing them so much. I'm used to having like fuchsia or other types of purple and lighter blues, but this worked out really well. It really challenged me and pushed me. For the most part, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. And I definitely would recommend the supplies that came with this box. On Jazz's Twitter, he did note that he may be able to run another batch of these boxes. So if you are interested, make sure that you follow him and follow his updates because you might be able to get your hands on one of these boxes. They are $99, I believe, but everything inside is worth over $150. Plus, it's a collector's edition. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here next Friday for a brand new video. Dry chicken. Get it. Good boy. What? Why are you, why are you scratching the carpet? Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm holding this box up the whole time to grow muscles. Yeah, right. <laughs>